Hi, I'm Carla Gazzetti, and this is Tim, and we are the co-hosts of Inflection Points, a podcast created by the Office of the CTO here at Extreme Networks, and you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, even ExtremeNetworks.com if you ever want to listen to us. Nicely done. Nice to get the plug out of the way early, Carla. Well done. What I can. <laughs> and of course, Inflection Points grapples with the concept of the infinite enterprise. Um, so, Carla, let's play a bit of a game. Uh, not like we would do so, but um, can you try and define the infinite enterprise in one sentence? Is it a really large spaceship from Star Trek? Uh, no. Oh. Um, what let do you me, think? Let me, let me take a shot at this. Is it a little tiny black lucite box? No, I don't remember talking about that on the podcast. No, yeah, I don't you're think you're right. I don't, I don't recall that one either. Uh, okay. Hmm. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I know the... I, I'm pretty sure I got this answer. All right. Well, <laughs> okay. Let's go. All right. So I, I think... Well, no, I think I know that the infinite enterprise really is a concept that we've been exploring on Inflection Points that was introduced by our CTO, Nabil Bukhari. Um, and the concept really is that... It's founded on three major principles. The first is that the infinite enterprise will be a distributed network. The second is it's created by a scalable cloud. And the third is it has to be entirely consumer centric experience so that it's adapted and easy to be able to use in a very distributed world where we're further and further apart from one another. Yeah, I think that's that's a really key component of this. Uh, the the infinite enterprise has been effectively kicked off by the the tipping point of the uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic. Right, this has right. caused people who normally would go into the office or congregate together in retail settings or you know um, uh, go to the hospital for for standard healthcare uh, services. Uh, everybody's at home. Right. We've right. all been we've all had to focus on what's most important to us, which is our own health and well-being. So we've changed the way we live and our society has had to deal with that. But technology now has to deal with that. Right. And it's a, a specifically unique event because our technology trends were going this way. But because all of this happened simultaneously to multiple countries and cultures all at the same time, and we all had the same relative technology in order to do this it's really advanced it and has accelerated this idea of the adoption of the infinite enterprise. And the reason why it's irrelevant right now is that if businesses don't at least consider this right now, they're not going to be ready for consumers in the future. Yeah, I agree. I think what's what's really important to know is that we're in it uh, and and our our needs individually are continuing to drive a technology change. It's no longer about technology for technology's sake. It's about technology to solve the experience that the user has, you know, living at home, right? How do you consume? How do you work? How do you have fun, right? right. All of that is, is now based on a distributed model of a human society. So we need to be able to address that with technology. So we need to we need to focus on that user aspect. Right, because we believe that, you know, there is no returning to normal. It's just a new normal. And in that new normal, technology can provide and will provide the same experience that you would have had if you went into the office as you will have sitting in your living room in Idaho. It doesn't matter where you are. You don't have to be in the San Francisco Bay Area to have the same experience that you can have somewhere else in the United States, as long as you have that connectivity and you develop that individualistic workspace or that experience there. Or even in Canada or, or anywhere even else around the world. <laughs> <laughs> So Carla, what what episode of the podcast really hit home for you? Was there something that 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 was discussed on the podcast that really brought this into sharp relief for you? I mean, I think there are so many episodes of the podcast that are really fantastic. And I'm not just saying that because it is our <laughs> good podcast. Plug, good plug. Well done. I know, but I, I have to say our episode two was probably one of my most favorite episodes where we had Nabil Bukhari, our CTO, and also Alan Kubler Amrod, who is our chief cloud officer here at Extreme Networks. And the reason why I enjoyed that so much is that it really resonated to me how we're already living in the new normal. It's mm -hmm. already here. We see examples of this already happening. 
And they make it so crystal clear that if you're a business decision maker or if you're someone managing a network, you have to consider this right now. Otherwise, you're not going to be prepared for the future. And if you haven't already started to think about cloud and how to di- how to digitize your entire business, you're already behind. And I went, what? I'm already behind? <laughs> how can I be already behind? <laughs> we don't want you to be left behind, Carla. Come on, keep up with, uh, keep up with what's going on. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple of things that really excited me and 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 threw it into sharp relief. I, I think one of them was uh, the discussion on healthcare, uh, talking about the check engine light for the human, um, you know, and the ability to to leverage the the infinite enterprise to make sure that you know we're we're proactive about our health. Once again, in in uh, in context with the pandemic. You know, there's there's a need to be able to understand what's happening in in your body before you have to go to the hospital and to know what yeah. those baselines are and to be able to have a healthcare system that can support the the uh, the influx of data that's necessary to make sure that you can have that proactive healthcare experience so that when when your check engine light goes on, you know, there's data yeah. to be able to to make sure that you're you're taken care of. Well, what was so illuminating about that episode when we had Doug McDonald, who was another member of the office of the CTO on talking about that, is that I went, yeah, why aren't we more proactive about it? How can I have, you know, my doctor come to me? How can my healthcare be more individualized and more tailored to my own needs? Because we have the technology. Why haven't we accelerated the adoption of that technology, how we use that data? Why don't we tailor it more to me? It's entirely possible. And now the pandemic has finally accelerated that. So why don't we do that? I was kind of, it was a big light bulb moment for me as well. Yeah, it's a bit of a surprise to think that some of these things haven't been in our purview in the past, but it really took the pandemic to become that tipping point to really force us to look at things in a different way. Um, you know, uh, businesses have thought about people working from home for forever, right? And, and you know, we've we've brought technologies to bear like the VPN to be able to try and give them some kind of experience uh, that that supports their ability to work from home. But but it doesn't necessarily give them the same experience that they can have in the office. So, you know, we've been forced into a, a different mode of thinking. And I think if there's something that that can come out of this pandemic that's good, I think it's our own reflection of, of what's important to us uh, in our daily lives and our work lives and how technology can be brought to bear to, to support those needs. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think the other reality that we talk about within on the podcast is that this isn't, you know, unfortunately, the, the pandemic and what has occurred, it's not going to be the last time we, that we may see this as a, as a human, as a society and, and the human race. So, you know, we are going to have to be more distributed and also we have the technology to do so. So, and this is what the next generation, as we also explore on the podcast, is going to expect. They're going to expect this kind of level of experience, an individualistic uh, view of the world. And this is where we're headed. So we should lean into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, there, there's an opportunity for us to make some, some really bold moves here. Um, and I guess the, the question that comes to my mind is what's after the infinite enterprise? What comes oh, next? I have no clue. I mean, <laughs> is that like, I, I don't know, some sort of micro robot or like maybe I can start to access the internet through my eyeballs or something. Like I'm sure they've already figured that out. <laughs> well, I won't be accessing the internet through your eyeballs. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, we look forward to uh, to uh, a, a, an opportunity to, to learn more about how we can uh, make the infinite enterprise that user experience for uh, for society and for technology. Yeah, and I really encourage everyone out there to come and listen to the podcast. If you're interested in the infinite enterprise, we break it down. And I hope that uh, this video has been super helpful in explaining a little bit more detail about the infinite enterprise. Super excited. Thanks very much, Carla. Thanks. <laughs>